Second game from Peter McPherson, nice. um, signer of Tiny Tones. He's also here. Uh, he's at the cloud, but he's showing his upcoming game, Fit to Free. So if you have some time to get to the cloud, but you know that we have a very good collaboration. We came out with games like Point Salad, Cascadia, Calico, and he's now starting working on the next upcoming hit, Fit to Free. And do -do -do, is it here? Uh, yeah. And Berdan over there that we're going to be partners with. So expect getting an email saying, hey, do you want to preview Berdan? Fill out this form, you will get a copy of Berdan. So yeah, so as you, you were just saying, it is a one to five game. It says it goes, uh, usually runs about 45 minutes. It sometimes can be even quicker too, because uh, that's how warm wormholes works, right? Like you'll bounce around and all of a sudden it'll be going quicker than you know. Now, uh, as I was telling you guys before, um, the goal of the game is to win as many points as possible, represented by these little uh, tokens over here. And, uh, and the goal, and what you guys do is, each turn, uh, every player will have basically three movements represented by these tiles here, and they'll also have a chance to draw new cards as well. So essentially what we're going to be doing is, you know, you really get a chance to think about what you want to do. So, uh, each time you move, uh, you can move anywhere in the space, but what you want to do is you want to flip uh, one of these to signify that you're going to move. So you, let's say I'm yellow, it matches my wrist, band. So we move yellow there, and then you, for a free movement, these will be stacked up in a pile, one through five. And what you're doing is you're planting your future wormhole there. And let's see if we jump all the way, say, over... Say eventually the game gets over here, and somehow you've ended up over here. Um, you can do another wormhole here. And once you've got two wormholes, each chip on, there's only two of each color. Uh, these should be yellow for the sake of this demonstration, but let's assume that this guy is a blue guy. So once the blue guy's activated his wormhole, you can jump between these with absolutely nothing. So if I move into this space, boom, I'm over here already if I want to go here. And you're going to have these passenger cards that all have destinations on them, right? So these cards are going to tell you, sort of basically be your little missions throughout the game. And as you drop off passengers throughout this game, you're going to earn these points. And whoever at the end of the game has the most points, wins. So there's tons of exciting moments, because as you can imagine, right now it's a pretty bland galaxy. But the second other players start getting wormholes going, uh, which once you've sort of laid them, you sort of have these little arrows at the bottom, you face them towards each other so you know where they're going to head up. But eventually, let's assume, as you guys play through and whatnot, You've got, you know, these different wormholes Maybe facing each other and everything. Um, so, say I'm about. starting over here, boom, one movement through this wormhole, but I want to get, you know, somewhere over okay. here, right? One movement through this wormhole, 
for free. Two movement for free. All of a sudden as well, this is nebulous space. This is one of the extra rules in the game. You can move through there for free as well. Third move. So that's exciting. Look at that. Three moves I've gotten from the very beginning of the space station pretty much as far along the board as I can just by placing these wormholes. And the great thing is, you don't have to just use your wormholes. As other people are playing, they're laying wormholes as well. So you can start looking at this board. You take a step back and you're like, hang on, I can see that the red player has a wormhole from there to there. If I can get through the green player's huh. wormhole, jump through there, jump through there, jump through there, I can get over there in just two moves. I can get through six parts of the board and score huge because I want to drop off my passengers, you know, say over here, in just, a, in just a couple of moves. So every turn you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. Oh, where can, I, where can I puzzle myself so that I can do the most with my only three actions per turn? The other really cool thing as well is, you know, it's not free to travel through somebody else's wormholes. So every time somebody travels through your wormhole, oh. you've set up good wormholes, you're going to get points. So at the end of the game, you're going to have a whole stack of points if you've got some of the best wormhole systems in the, in the galaxy. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much it. There's a couple of other rules as well, like these, uh, this space station has some rules as well. Anything that's got like an orbit around it, like the space station does, that's all one movement. So if you wanted to move from here to here, that's all one movement, you can move on from there. My favorite thing, absolutely, because I love, not only do I love wormholes, but I love, uh, and like how they work in sci-fi, but I also love hyperdrive. So when you hit something like this, and obviously these pieces come apart, so you can like rearrange the boards and stuff like that. When you hit this square, you can literally fire your character, your your rocket anywhere in as long as it's in a cardinal sort of direction. So if I was over here and I wanted to get over here, I can launch myself over here, oh, wow. plan a wormhole, and then all of a sudden, assuming I had the other half of that wormhole over here, I bounce back in one go. So it's really, really exciting, really, really fun as well. Um, there, like I said, a couple of other rules. Like you obviously can't move into these spaces that have things in them, um, but the game ends when, actually I haven't set this up, here we go. So let's assume that these are in the right order, but essentially what happens is every time what we're doing is we're trying to make the best network for the passengers. So, what's trying to happen is every time somebody places a wormhole, let's say it's like late game, and we're placing wormholes, like wormhole five over here, every time someone places a wormhole in the orbit of a planet, like they're touching one of the planets, they all take an exploration token, which is worth points at the end of the game, and that also acts as the game's timer. So, so what's going to happen is you're going to eventually hit a every planet's connected because there's an equal number of these tokens. So there are planets. So once every planet is connected, you're going to hit the end game function. So you hit here, and then everybody's going to have three turns left. And that's where everything gets crazy because people need to really, really, really like max out their points and figure out their turns so they can bounce everywhere in the galaxy. And some turns might take you ages just to figure out where you want to go because you might end up here 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 because you can just use your free actions to be moving around through the wormholes but slowly only very slowly using up your movement actions as well so um that's pretty much it this is i'm going to be completely honest one of my first times playing this game um but it's so so interesting so much fun so uh because i don't have this set up properly let's just assume that these are all in order there we go so we'll play this here uh, there we go, we'll get him back there. Um, and essentially, let's have a look. Uh, do we have any player cards? We don't have any player reminder cards right now. So, uh... I'll have to find some. Let me just see if they're... Oh, here they are. So, yeah, so every turn, let me give you some of these while we've got you guys sitting around. Have a look at what's on here, and we'll sort of talk through what you can do in your turn. So, as I said, you know, you get a bunch of free actions as well. Um, as part of a free action, is you're going to have a hand of cards that obviously dictate what planets you want to go to. So you can drop off passengers for free, and then also use your once per turn draw a card thing to uh, draw extra cards from the deck. The other thing is as well, Sometimes passengers are not going to be wanting to go where you want to go. So what you can do is you can actually drop off passengers and you'll discard cards from your hand to draw new cards. And what you're going to do is instead of having a collective discard pile that's just junk in the game, these cards are going to go to what's called the space port. And every time you discard a card from a certain planet, you'll put it in a pile respecting which planet it wants to go to. And what you can do is you can warp back because most of your number one warps are going to be over here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to walk back to this first area here and once you're in the orbit of the space station you can take any of the cards that are in the space as well. So you can start to think, oh I've got a great connection, 
up to Crystal Planet Neo. I'm gonna walk back to one and, and say, uh, say you've here discarded a whole bunch of Crystal Planet cards. I can jump in there, steal these Crystal Planet cards and get it going from there. So that's essentially how the game works as well. Um, it's super awesome. I don't know if I mentioned before, but what happens is obviously you can only walk between the numbers that are respective. So only fives can walk between five of your own color. The other thing as well is there's also, I don't know if there's any on this player board, but there's also on maybe some of the other sides, there's also some wild card walk tokens. So let's have a look here. So we got number four. What happens is if I go here, I can walk to any number four in the game. So I can be like, all right, so I just need to, I, I've been at, you know, City Planet over here, one step to any four, and then go there. And like I said, it makes you feel really smart because you're like, oh, I got only three movements, but I can move wherever I want. It's super awesome. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Ultimately, once the, once you guys have, uh, have uh, commuted everybody around the galaxy and stuff like that, uh, you've got your last three turns, and then most points wins. So, um, I would love to get a little demo started, but I don't know if we're going to have a ton of time for that. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is, who wants to just give it a quick go, just to sort of set up some things. Let's try and get this like... Sure. Yeah, 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 jump in. Yeah, how a turn certainly plays out. So let's grab one of these turn player cards. Problem is, let's just, like starting the game, it sort of starts to ramp up a little bit. So, uh, so if you would, let's say you were starting here, you would start with a hand of cards. Unfortunately, this hasn't been set up the best way. So let's assume you've got those two, and this one. So you've got your hand of cards there, so you know where you want to get to, right? So you know you obviously, you know, you've got a couple of, uh, you've got a couple of planets to get to like Crystal Planet or whatnot, so you say you want to get over here, or it might even be better to get to like this this fairy Chewbacca planet or whatever this is. Um, ultimately, yeah, so uh, let's say uh, if you want to sort of go blue. Um, so if on your turn you start as a blue player, you've got, as I said, you'll have three little movements here. And then you'll choose where you want to move in just one space. And then again, you can do any of these free actions as much as you want. So let's assume we're starting that way. I'm sorry if we're a little bit over here. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, all you're going to do is just choose how you're going to use your tokens each turn. So, as I said, you will, uh, you know, let's say, what color do you, what color we blue there? Okay, cool. So, uh, you know, you'll use one of these to move any one space, and then you, if you wanted, you're going to have a pile of these, that are, and they actually are all stacked in your respective pile, so you'll start with one, and then one, and then two. And then two, then three, and then three, yeah. So that takes the other side of where the wormhole is going to come out. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get there first and then place it? That's correct, oh, yeah. So it's going to take a couple of turns. It's going to take a couple of turns, yeah. So that's why uh, it might be a little bit tricky just to show from the beginning. But let's assume, let's assume for some reason you are still there, and, uh, and you've taken from, and you know, your one is already here. Once you've placed a single one, when you go to place your second one, they both flip over and become active. So, right, so that's how that works. Um, and as I said, you can't really use the, uh, use the, so any, any wormhole of the same color, once they're active, face each other, and then they're instantly connected, right? Cool. So, uh, so let's assume, so let's assume this is how the board's set up. You're blue, you get to take your first movement action, and, yep, go on. Yep, so this is you, you flip that over, you'll get to take a movement action, and the cool thing is anything with a dotted line around it, there's a couple of other ones on the other side, is an orbit, so you actually only have one space from anywhere in this dotted line. Okay, that's what I was going to ask, because like, it's going to take me a couple, so I can go mm -hmm. here, Yep. that's one. And then this is free. Yep. Two. And then say you wanted to get to, you know, the third planet, right? You just have to slowly build your base up over there. But at the same time, other people are starting to create connections, right? So let's say for some reason, player two is already over here. I mean, sorry, red player is already over here and has a connected red. I can't find the other red. There you go. So let's say that that's already over there, and can blue is already there. So you you've come through this port. Okay. So yep. So I, can I go from port to port, or do I? You have can to go as long as yeah, you have to go here. So you okay. you have one movement. So there's another one. Yep. And then boom. Yep. Excellent. And then I can put the last one. Yeah. So uh, I think you just need to be in the orbit of the planet, 
and then you can uh, drop everybody off there, and you can do this. So you, you would, it's absolutely free to drop people off. So you can definitely claim those points, and then you've got a smaller hand, so you can actually, if you wanted to like exchange cards, you could use this, flip it over, and uh, you would draw a, a new. Uh, you could discard whatever you wanted to the spaceport that we discussed before, and draw okay. as many new cards as you wanted. Gotcha. Okay, that's. And the end. If on next turn. You wanted to bounce back, you could take anything, like, because you've got a really good network to here now, right? Obviously, player two is going to get a point every time you use their network, though. But if you wanted to bounce that back, it might be worth it to go back and grab all of the discarded thing, uh, all of the discarded fur planet cards, just for the sake of it. And that's basically wormholes. Once there's once every time somebody puts a wormhole next to a planet, as I said before, you'll get a chip and get extra points at the end of the game for that. Then once you hit the all planets connected, then you take the three turns, and whoever got most points wins. That's it. It's really simple and so, despite the sweat on my forehead, really easy to explain. Um, yeah, and that's super, super really intuitive. It meshes with the safe space. Do you guys have any questions that I may be able to answer? Um, so with the, you know how you can only travel like between the same number? Mm -hmm. Can you travel between numbers of the different colors? Or no, only, your own, only, only your only own the numbers. One, oh, only the one number. Yeah, so yeah. So if I were to get here and that's not mine, I could travel from green one to green one. Yep. And pay. Do I pay, or do that person just get a point? No, that person just gets a point. Okay, so you so can use it as freely. Yeah, currency, it's not. It's just kind of the collective. Absolutely. Yeah. The real cool thing is, you know, you pulled it out before. It's going to take a couple of turns, but now it's yellow person's turn. Maybe it's worth it for them to use there to go there, give you a point, give you a point, and then they can drop their first wormhole, you know, here, and then bounce, and then maybe perhaps later on they'll be able to bounce somewhere else and build that network. Up and up and up, depending on what's in their hand, of course. So the hand, your hand, you're not, you don't need to show it to anybody. Not until you're ready to, like either, you know, claim the points for it or whatnot. Okay. And then, um, and then, like I said, you can you can use this every turn to completely junk whatever you've got and draw new cards. So you can do that once per turn. So that's on this uh, once per turn action. You can pick up new passages. Yeah. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for that. No, that's okay.